Now, the 1997 Asian financial crisis is in fact a significant event that many of us will remember because it was a crisis that actually, you know, affected the property market. And, you know, during then, uh, many buyers suffered because the property prices plunged overnight. And, you know, and many, of course, uh, suffered. But then again, you know, from this significant event, we are able to learn many great lessons and mistakes whereby we are able to use a very macro perspective to understand what are the lessons that we can learn. And today in this video, I'm going to share with you two important lessons that we have probably understood and learned and how it can really help us when we want to make decisions, uh, especially when property making decisions easier for us to understand the whole entire market. Right. So hi everyone, Gainer here from Property Made Simple, whereby you know we actually give uh, customized solutions to property sellers if you are looking to sell a property at a higher price, or probably looking into property investments if you want to know and understand how you can make a better decision in terms of making the right choices. And also, of course, for property upgraders, if you are thinking whether should you upgrade from your HDB or your current private to uh, you know, another private properties or owning two private properties. Okay, so back to the topic about this uh, you know, uh, Asian financial crisis uh, that happened in 1997. Now, during just give you a little bit of history, right? What really happened? Right, if you really understand, uh, it all started from this collapse of this Thai baht currency, right? So it actually uh, had a ripple effect eventually, and neighboring countries are affected, especially Singapore, which is very close proximity to Thailand. And because of this, many businesses are affected, stock markets plunge all the way. And, you know, people are in a very anxiety mode, you know, stuff like that. And that's why, you know, things really happened and many people suffered, right? So especially for in the property market sector, uh, you know, the prices dropped significantly, right? And uh, I clearly remembered, especially when, you know, I spoke to a lot of seniors, elderly, right, who happened to, re to be during that point of time uh, and I heard uh, how they suffered. And from then, I actually learned two very important uh, lessons, right? What really happened and why it contributed to the, you know, to the plunge in terms of property prices. So if you can really understand during that point of time, one key thing was the buyers during then, they actually over leverage, right? So the key thing is that they over leverage. So if you, you understand that in today's terms, if you want to buy a property, right you need to have a five percent cash another 20 percent cash or cpf and followed by 75 percent of loan right so you need to have that 25 percent down payment in order for you to buy a property and also if you are able to take up to 75 percent of loan depending on your salary so these are things that actually a sort of a barrier for you in order to buy a property. But during then, during the 1997, I mean, I'm not too sure during that time, I forgot, was it because, it, was it like just 90% uh, loan, 10%? I'm not too sure. But I think during the time, people are able to buy properties easily. So they are able to over leverage, right? And because of this, a single household, right? Or, pro or probably a single buyer is able uh, uh, to own many properties, two properties, three properties, or even four properties, right? And 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 that's why during the time people over leverage, right? I I may be wrong, but I heard that it was something like that. Now, but then the second key important uh, lesson that we learned or really happened that then that contributed to the collapse or probably the plunge in property prices is this thing called margin call from the banks. So what are margin costs? Margin costs is basically uh, the, the value of your property drops significantly that is, over, that is even below your bank loan, uh, uh, your outstanding bank loan uh, 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 liability, right? So just to put it easy for you guys to understand, imagine your, you, you buy a property, right? And your loan is $1 million, right? And the valuation is probably 1.2, 1.3. But in the crisis, right, 
it actually the valuation of your property drop way below than your loan um, uh, uh, liability, which is probably one million, and it dropped to nine hundred thousand. So can you imagine the value of the property is nine hundred thousand, and your loan is like one million. So there is a difference of one hundred thousand, and that is where the bank starts to call for this thing called margin call and they ask you to top up the difference of this hundred thousand dollars so can you imagine those buyers that over leverage have three four five properties and they now have to face margin calls from banks to top up the difference and that is where a lot of people couldn't afford to make that difference payment and that's where people start to force sell and people start to be in a panic mode and that's where a lot of people start to suffer and they have to force sell and the property prices really drop and this is one of the contributing factor as well and so you know from this you can really understand that in every crisis property prices will definitely be affected but then again from the 1997 up to date right we can really understand and learn from all these things is that government starts to really intervene very uh, uh, probably I would say a very close watch and government will really comes in and intervene in the market to help or probably I would say the word is to stabilize right because you, you have to understand a big bulk of us Singaporeans use a lot of CPF funds to buy properties and CPF is equals to our retirement, right? So anything that happened to the property market will also affect our retirement funds as well because we use a huge bulk of CPF funds to pay for the property. So government knows all these things and they are trying to stabilize the market. But overall, you will really take note that government really wants the property prices to steadily grow, right? And that's why they want to they don't want to have a huge increase, they don't want to have a huge drop, they just want to stabilize. And you can really see from this, especially during this COVID-19 period, how the government really goes in, intervene, and you know, stabilize the market. And one very clear example is they allow the six months, right? The six months uh, deferred in terms of loan payment for property owners, right? And this really um, helps because a lot of people who are affected, right, uh, during COVID-19 in terms of uh, every, the, the, the depends on the particular, particular sector, right? If they have to force sell because of the jobs affected, then it will also create uh, an effect of the property prices to drop, right? But then government allows to have uh, property owners to defer the payment, right? So from this Asian financial crisis, you are able to understand how governments, you know, pick up different lessons, right? And how they are able to get better and better and how to help and stabilize the property market in the future. So what I'm sharing with you guys is that we must look from a macro perspective. So buying properties, there are two different things that you have to understand. One is the macro perspective and one is the micro perspective. So what is the my macro? The macro is we need to understand what's happening around us, right? Although we just need to know from a certain point of view, but at least we have uh, uh, an understanding. Like for example, how's the interest rates like, you know, stuff like that. So that at least we can understand from a macro perspective if we want to invest properties, right? Then again, from a micro perspective, we also have to understand individually how we are able to buy properties. For example, our objectives, our strategies, choosing the right properties, you know, these are these two are interlinked, right? So at least, you know, from this video, I just want to share with you the importance of a macro perspective, especially from this 1997 financial crisis, what really happened? And did this really escalate to date, you know, things like how the government react whenever property market, you know, had a huge plunge or increase, you know, stuff like that. So at least from this, you know, I want you guys to understand the importance of a macro perspective, right? So that it's easier for you guys whenever you want to make investments to understand what's happening now so that you have some reservations or, you know, you probably understand or you probably will have the confidence to, you know, to invest in the properties, uh, especially when, you know, now these days we have uh, a lot of resales or new launches available for you guys to look at as well. 
So I hope that you guys really love this video that I'm, I'm actually shared with you guys. So just remember to click like or even comments if you feel something what I shared is really something useful, right? And I hope to see you guys soon. Bye-bye.